That's 1-800-473-8619. Tell me about this idea that you had. I mean, that you could use pictures <laughs> right. to communicate with Max, but also to give Max a voice that he'd never had before. Well, it's wonderful because God gave me this gift of art before I ever had Max. So when I realized that Max learned visually, I began to draw pictures for him. He was about nine, and those were our real tough days. And I started to translate the world into pictures for him so that he could understand cause and effect, he could understand sequencing of events. And very quickly, Max began to dictate what he wanted me to draw. He became the art director. And he started to tell me about his memories and his fears and things that were bottled up and once he saw his words land on the page and become tangible and concrete his language just poured out this is a time when he was apparently very afraid of refrigerators yes it so, was i mean most of us kind of like the refrigerator we go there often it's our, it's our favorite place of the house yes max wasn't all that fond of refrigerators oh well and the interesting thing is now he is obsessed with refrigerators but back then 2001 he asked me to draw him he asked me to draw him walking past the refrigerators which okay, so he read the captions so here for us afraid of he dictated. So Max and Mom went to CVS in Marshfield. Okay. Max saw the refrigerators, and now he tells me it made the sound of Christmas bells. Then he tells me it sounded like Christmas bells because the bottles were jiggling. Actually, I helped him with that. I told him that. Then he asked me to draw this. Max walked, walked past the refrigerators. He would never do that. He couldn't even walk in a store at that point. Max and Mom passed a little refrigerator on the way out. We were all done with CVS, and everybody's happy in the end. Now, he looked at these over and over, this drawing, and he conquered his fear of refrigerators by, by looking at these drawings. So by being able to see visually the experience that he had, yes. he resolved the experience yes. and then could move on. It gave Max a voice, which is so powerful. I want to, to read this one, which has to do with a blue card. I forgot oh. these two of you, so let me do that very quickly. And, and follow us through this now, when Max was two years old. This was a turning point for us, because this was one of the early picture talks. Uh -huh. And we hadn't really figured out the power behind these. Max is sitting in the bathtub, and he starts telling me that he wants pictures of Joanne's blue sports car. I didn't know what he was talking about. But as he began to tell me a little bit more and I grabbed the paper, I realized, now he's almost 10 when he's telling me this, I realized it was a babysitter that took him out when he was just two years old. Now when Max was two, he had no language. He was like a human super ball. You wouldn't even think he could hear you. But he remembered in perfect detail the babysitter that took him out, she wasn't supposed to. So, so read for us then the, the, the captions. We'll watch it on the screen. When Max was two years old, a babysitter named Joanne came to play with Max if Mom had a meeting. One day, Joanne put Max in her blue sports car with no seatbelt. I started to draw the seatbelt. He said no. Hmm. Joanne drove to her blue house in the town. Then Joanne drove back to our house then mom came home and Joanne left to go back to her house. Max was safe. Now what's remarkable about this, and you talk about it in, in the book Dancing with Max, this is stunning. This happened when he was two years old. Eight years right. later, you draw the picture and then you actually go and find the house by a GPS unit, right? Max. <laughs> the, GP, <laughs> the, the human, human GPS. GPS. Tell this story because it's, it's absolutely stunning to see the intelligence that is in Max. We so underestimate what these people understand because just about four years ago, Max said he wanted to drive past Joanne's house. And I asked, do you know how to get there? Yes, he did. So he told me, go left, go right, go down this street. We came up to a blue house. Now, I didn't doubt him except that Later on, about a month later, I was going through some papers, some old, old addresses, and there was Joanne's address, exactly as Max had told me. I want to me. make sure I understand this. 
He had not been to that house since he was no. two years old. No. Eight years later, he does this story, and four years after that, he comes along and is able to guide you right directly to her house from yours, yes. not having been there since he was two years old. No. These people are unusually gifted, Governor, and they have a, a memory. They can't wipe anything off the memory. That's both a curse and a blessing, as C.S. Mm -hmm. Lewis found. But if you can help them get it out, if you can help them understand what's going on inside of them, then you're giving a voice to the voiceless. That's really what Emily has done. Chuck, it's, it's obvious that the picture therapy has been revolutionary, not just for Max, but for other children who have been able to discover it and realize how to communicate. But I'm going to ask you a personal question. How has this changed Chuck Colson? Oh, my. <laughs> well, Governor, I'm the type A person who's always in a rush out to save the world and have been since I was a young man. And Max is the, only, is the first person who's ever come along who stops me cold because he's not interested in my theological knowledge and he's not interested in all the things I normally spend my time teaching. So you've got to get down on the floor on your hands and knees and start dealing with Max on his terms. That has changed my understanding of uh, people who are hurting and in need and I have come to appreciate a, a totally different kind of love than I'm, I'm used to. And Max gives love unconditionally. I mean, he's a, he's, you, you feel his love immediately. And when you pay some attention to him, it's just a joy. But you have to stop and get out of your world and into his world. And that, for me, has been a life-changing lesson. He's humbled me a lot, and uh, it's been good for me. It's been great for me. And I'm so proud, of course, of what Emily's done and that, how Max is being used by God. It's, it's, it's thrilling. It's a magnificent story, and it is not a story to bring you down. It's a story to lift you up, but also to tell you that child who is autistic is a remarkable child. He is a gift of God, and he's filled with incredible abilities and knowledge. They just come out in very different ways, mm -hmm. and that's a story that I think is so powerful. You share it in such a magnificent way. Emily, thank you very much for being here. Thank you, God. And always, Chuck Paulson, I love you. I love you. I'm always so happy to be here with you. Thank you very much. I know that we've been preempted for several weeks.